Welcome to the live stream, Matt here, and tonight we are on episode 3 of uh, the Fly Tying 101, turned off the volume on the computer. Um, so tonight we're tying uh, a bunch of nymphs again, um, we haven't got to my uh, most formidable adversary which is dry flies. I can't tie everything. So tonight we are going to be rocking the girdle bug. And I'm still having to refresh, by the way, just so you know. Fly Fiend, what's up, man? How's it going? Um, so we're tying Girdle Bug, tying a PT, and uh, I'll show you. I carry uh, just a few with me in the guide box, so they're kind of uh, kind of important fly. It's a good one to learn and to tie. Kind of works everywhere. It's a great searching pattern. We're going to be tying a uh, really cool caddis imitating soft tackle. Nate, how's it going, man? Um, as well as a uh, fly called T. Well, the soft tackle is called Darian's Cool Cat Soft Tackle. And we're tying TP's Little Nymph Thing. And following it up by kind of more of a classic wet fly, which is a uh, bucktail streamer. And uh, I think I'm going to start with start with a PT tonight um, just seems like a good jumping off point um, in relation to what we've been doing there's a million variations on this fly um, Claire hello welcome glad you could make it um, one thing I do have to do I remember there was a there was a wiener last week and uh, trying to see where that name was here and now I just put it on my phone and let's see here sorry guys I meant to have this ready but uh, Orion Walton was our big winner last week which is pretty cool so big congratulations goes out to dude that's really odd because I have a Orion shirt on so Apparently, uh, that's how you win, is to uh, guess what shirt I'll wear on the next live stream and have that name. Lanny, hello, welcome. So, um, yeah, so Orion oh, Walton probably got an email from us already. Jordan, I would do the homework, dude. Just kidding. I'm sorry if I sound super nasally, too, by the way, and look like uh, I've been run over by a tank, but uh, I've had pretty good fever so you're lucky this probably isn't a live stream or a live event but uh, yeah let's uh, I'm gonna scoot into my vice here and uh, we'll get zoomed in oh, we're gonna need to move the revolution over so there we go cool so a PT, it comes in about, like I said, a million variations. It's incredibly modifiable. Um, you can make this fly whatever you want. Rick, welcome. <laughs> there you go, Fly Fiend. Dennis, hello, welcome. Nice to see you on here. Uh, so let's see. We're going to start with a uh, just a basic size 14 wet nymph hook. Um, probably my favorite hook for most of my nymphs is a 1760. Um, so if you don't have the, the hairline kit that I'm working out of and you have a local fly shop, that would be a groovy option. Okay. Do, 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 do. Yeah, we were hoping to have this refreshing issue taken care of, but no love. Which is kind of a bummer, because it takes a while for that thing to refresh. So you have to be nice to me tonight. Mike, hello, welcome. Alright, so for the PT... And everybody has their own little spin on how to tie this thing, but uh, the results are typically all the same. 
So I'll show you also some cool tricks tonight as well to help get your creative juices flowing. I don't even have all the tools out yet. This is crazy. And uh, again, as always, somewhere in the mix here, uh, we'll have a, a secret word, and uh, it'll get you get you going. Scott, hello. Ebers, hello. Andrew, hello, and welcome. Uh, let's see. There we go. That's pretty centered looking ish. Turn my screen up. I have a little bit different view here tonight. Um, so for our tail and most of this fly, we're going to be using uh, this is just a ring neck pheasant uh, tail center. In these kits, you get two. Typically, they come in a super duper long full center section. Great feather to buy. Uh, you know, you're going to get a lot of bang for your buck out of a pair of uh, center sections. Like I said, fly tying can be pretty economical. And I'm going to take about five tail segments here. Now I, I just pinch about a quarter of an inch uh, in my left hand and begin to secure that. And that's going to create our tail there. And I move the thread in front of the rest of the pheasant tail section there. Doug, hello. Carl, hello. Made it for week three. Where's your bow tie? I know, I know. I'm getting heat for not having a bow tie. Believe it or not, they don't sell bow ties in Reading. I was, however, offered a bolero tie, but I felt like it wasn't quite my style. Um... It really just didn't do it for me. Doug, hello from Atlanta. I'm glad to know we have you here from Atlanta. I like it. Never been to Atlanta, but it looks like a cool place. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get that first turn in. And I'll go ahead and, and wrap this forward. And I can, you know, you can build a little bit of a tapered body here if you want. You don't have to. But I stopped this copper wire right where my first turn of pheasant is going to be. We move it forward. Good evening, John. Welcome, David. Welcome, hello. And let's see here. We'll take a hackle plier. So you want to kind of grab these guys equally. And you can see if you don't get them equal, you see how it has that bunch in there? Cause some uh, shenanigans. Oh, we got a double post there. Good excuse. <laughs> so, sometimes they're just a little willy nilly. But we're not going to use that much, so we'll go with it. Oops. You don't want to pull too hard, they are kind of delicate. So, you can see I pulled one out there. That happens. It's not going to hurt the body of the fly at all. See that one's loose. It's going to kind of cause havoc. So we'll pop that's the other part of that loose one, I believe. We'll pop that out of there. <laughs> Can't even tie a pheasant tail. Fevers are no fun. So what I'll do is I'll wrap about, I like to do about two thirds. And then we'll come behind that, catch it and it's ours now. And we'll trim that little guy off at the end. You'll have to really pardon my sniffle. I hope it's not that bad if you have like headphones on or something like that. Waiting to catch up here just a hair. I'm going to go ahead on. I like to counter rib these and that's just my own personal preference. Take your time, just do your spacing right. You know, you don't want your buddy to dig in your box and say, man, these all look silly. Um, just that couple extra seconds 
um, you know, the whole speed comes with time kind of a story there. And we'll do a helicopter off here. That's some really tough wire. <laughs> Carl, hello. Jordan, I'm sorry to disappoint you. VP, greetings and salutations. And Russell, no, you haven't you haven't missed too much yet. Um, so like like anything, um, with these patterns here, you know, you can always mix and match, you know, what you're doing. You can put a lot of different cool beads on the front of these. I actually fished a PT with this one that looks like a, a, a jawbreaker in there for quite a while and did amazingly well. You can use cool little tungsten heads on this fly. You can really modify it to make it your own. So what I do now is I pull off, actually sorry, got a step ahead of myself, I get excited sometimes. Actually no, no I didn't. I'm all out of sorts. Um, <clears throat> so what I do is I measure some legs off, typically. And then I just transfer that. So say if it's about a finger's pinch, I'm going to go ahead and tie this in with the butts, which is these frilly sections facing forward. I'll show you what we'll do here with that. And you can omit this step and just use the rest of that wing case. I just like to have the little tapered ends on there. I'm feeling like that was a little bit out of, a little bit too long. Next up, and that's going to form a wing case on our fly. Sorry, I got to refresh. I'm not used to this refreshing thing. I like things that work seamlessly. So I'm just going to grab a couple, you know, you could do one or two uh, peacock hurls. And these are just standard peacock hurl. Let's see. Hey Clark, welcome. Nymph heads are pretty cool. When do I like to fish these, Rick? Um, well, that's a great question. I fish a PT um, pretty much all the time. Uh, I'm not very frightful of a PT. So I have a rule if I'm nymphing and I'm on a new river is that I will throw a PT. And what that does for me is I look a lot for like bugs that are sitting around you know say if you see a lot of small bugs then maybe I'll throw a size 18 PT something like that you know a little bit smaller and um, but realistically anytime it's a great general searching pattern um, it really doesn't uh, you know it can be taken for any number of bugs it's just kind of got one of those it's like a classic searching pattern. So I've caught big steelhead on these and you can really just can't go wrong with the PT. So what I do is I create the little little bubble back here. And I mean little. And I'm going to pull these fibers up and if we did it even we'll pull some over here and some over there lose one along the way. So you can see I wrapped them forward to create the head on the fly. If you get a little bit bigger head on this pattern, that's fine. It doesn't matter. It's still part of the fly. Um, and then we'll go ahead and whip finish this. And if uh, it would have been intelligent and grabbed my dot thread, it would probably be a little bit smaller of a head of the pattern, you know, head of the fly there. So you can see at this point now, you get this really cool little buggy scenario. I know, I know. Sorry, Dennis. 
David, oh, awesome. I'm glad you got the kit. So if you want to spice things up, this is a, a UV resin. You'll probably see in the stores they have the the poxy back, you know, poxy back everything. So I put a drop on there first and foremost. That can actually be a substitute for your head cement as well. Um, and then I'll just add just another little drop there and it really just creates kind of a bomb proof wing case um, and in the past uh, you used to have to use like a five minute epoxy it takes forever to set up and this just actually I feel like this is a much better beginner technique so I am saying PT, not petty. <laughs> um, some of the main points that I want to point out, though, is uh, on this petty, I mean PT, jeez, Cheech, you got me now, um, is uh, I like to have a really small body and just a barely larger, you know, thorax. So you want just that really thin profile um, and have it be really kind of classic and small. Um, for this, I mean, you could fish this like, uh, getting back to uh, Rick's question, this could be like a Betis. Um, if you have a PMD hatch going on, this would probably work because it's kind of this reddish brown that comes in this feather. You can see it has this cool reddish brown hue behind it. Um, so the versatility of this is just phenomenal. I guess I need to leave that out because it's probably going to be in our next pattern somehow too. And you can actually completely omit the little leg step. It doesn't, uh... Hey, Jeremy. <laughs> Welcome to Trolling Matt on Fly Tying 101 and Heckling. I like it. Welcome. I'm glad you figured out how to comment. Um, so yeah, so that's the first pattern for this evening. So next up we're going to do... Uh, kind of a cool soft hackle caddis pattern that uh, one of the boys from Hairline has created up and uh, it's his pattern. So we're going to start out, mm, where to go, bingo, um, with a size 12 wet nymph hook. Again, any cool downturned eye hooks going to work for this. <clears throat> I'm going to switch my thread really quick. It calls for a black thread. If I was Cheech, I'd just have a thousand bobbins just sitting around, but I'm not that cool. Okay, so... Per our usual, we'll start by doing connecting turns down the shank of the hook. And once we get there, we're going to use some Hungarian partridge feathers. And we're going to create a tail out of this. So here's just a natural bag of Hungarian partridge. Nope. Oh. Hey Dustin, hello, hello. Jeremy, it was Orion Walton. That was our big winner. From last week. So congratulations again goes out to Orion Walton. Um, and I'm going to peel off just a small smidgen, so like an eighth of an inch of these partridge feathers and give it about an eighth of an inch of the back there. And I'll just go ahead and loosely secure this in. It's not going to get pulled out by a trout. They're not going to like bite the tail of this thing and pull out so you don't have to do like rock star turns um, going forward. Nobody's going to see this. Um, and next up we're going to use some more of our just basic copper wire here. So 
So I also have been filming these guys and I think they're going to be launched soon. Um, <laughs> Scott, it's pretty true, the light does make a difference. How much was the kit? Um, I think there's different levels of the, the, the kit, Luis, that you can get. Um, I think it, uh, I think, it, I forget what they start at. Um, I think it's like 80 bucks, but it gets you, gets you enough to get rocking for sure. <laughs> let me, let me, uh, oh, David answered the question. Thank you, David. It's a hundred bucks. Only a thousand. I'm a noob. <laughs> but yeah, Scott, the, uh, the 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 lights are tuned to the resin. So when we develop the resin, uh, you know, our lights have to meet into a specific uh, wavelength to make them cure. <laughs> so, all right. So next up, we're gonna use some more of our peacock curl here. I think the $100 kit, though, is the one that comes with the vise and um, all of the tools as well, which, you know, is a great start-off point. So I'm going to tie in this peacock hurl, and we're going to wrap about halfway forward. Uh, wire size is a medium. Sorry, Claire, I forgot to clarify that. Um, bobbin for people with large hands. Um, I have Sam Squatch hands, and uh, I use the bobbin that I designed, which is the Loon bobbin. Uh, there are a number of other great ones out there. Uh, the hairline uh, tungsten tubed bobbin is pretty darn legit um, it's what I use quite often as well um, <clears throat> best thing to do is just cruise to a fly shop and um, check them out so next up we're gonna go ahead and just wrap through this with our wire again go pretty mellow not a race nobody's timing you it's supposed to be a relaxing event Unless there's like a thousand people heckling you. But, uh. <laughs> How many flies, Cam? Let's see. Jim, I don't understand your question. I'm sorry. If I miss something and I'm being silly, just let me know. Um, so next up, we're going to create a little dubbing ball out of this ice cream caddis dubbing. Uh. So if you guys notice, when we were tying like stuff like those size 18s, I was still using the same bobbin. And a lot of that actually comes down to just hand control. Thread control. Ron, hello? <laughs> Where do I send the bolo tie with fish ends? I like it. So we're just going to create this dubbing noodle, which is where we put that dubbing on there. We've done that a couple times. And we're just going to wrap forward. I like to go over with ice dub, depending on the body that I want to make. 
and then I'll come back right into here and build a really smooth little thread body. If you have some of these willy-nilly guys going all over the place, don't worry about it. Whoa, let's rip that guy in half. He'll have to work. Next up, we're going to use, kind of like we did on our uh, partridge in yellow last week, we're going to use this uh, Hungarian partridge fruit collar. Ron, I think I said hello, but if I didn't, because I'm refreshing and it confuses me, um, because I have the ADD. Hello. And if you guys hear like some super awesome burnouts, there's a bunch of rednecks that live down the street and they're pretty cool, but they have these huge tired trucks and they never bothered to re-gear them. So like when it's wet, it's like the only time they can pull off a burnout. <laughs> Oh, how many flies can I build with the kit? Um, man, uh, with all honesty, so if you look at it, you're getting vice and tools and all this other jazz as well. Um, but I think I could probably get 40 or 50 flies, at least $100 worth of flies out of the kit, have materials left over, and uh, then have a killer set of tools that you can then build from. So it's a, it's a great value and um, it's probably the best kit I've seen because when I started the, the kits were pretty, pretty wonky. There's actually color photography which is pretty awesome. So I'm going to take just one turn of the partridge here. And then once I capture that I'll go ahead and wrap right over the top. I'm going to cut off the rest of our stem here. And we'll go ahead and whip finish. And the reason I had the bobbin so close there is because it actually hangs up and uh, doesn't allow it to uh, pop off. Just a little trick. So this is going to simulate a caddis's head. Um, they have darker black brownish colored heads. And uh, that's going to simulate that. So you could use uh, standard water-based head cement if you're impatient like me because of the ADD thing again. Um, I'll just put a drop of our flow resin on there. and we'll go ahead and rotate and yeah so so Scott getting back to your question and statement about uh, UV lights and everything like that um, just because it seems seems to me that every beginning fly tire um, that comes into fly tying right now um, versus say when I started tying has so many more resources and avenues to gain information like watching a live stream, watching a guy's YouTube videos, going to an event or a show, watching everything. Um, and your learning curve is just like ramped up and you're seeing guys that have been tying for like two or three years with amazing skill levels. So um, I'll, I'll touch on the, the differences in UV lights. So you can get the one that has, you know, like this, you can see in there there's one bulb. Now, you'll see the ones that have like 80 bulbs, and you're like, oh wow, that has to be great. The intensity of those bulbs doesn't multiply because there's 80 of them. The actual chipset has to be a better chipset to make it, uh, um, you know, make it a better light. So, hopefully that can help kind of clear some stuff up for guys. Um, John asks, West Coast Rednecks. Yeah, you'd be, uh, um, uh, uh, Jeremy asks, when do I fish this pattern? Um, this is a great pattern, uh, in the springtime 
anytime the caddis are around, it kind of emulates um, like a cased caddis pattern. So you could change this to a cinnamon with brown thread um, because uh, a lot of our caddises, they build little uh, houses around the, their bodies to protect themselves. <coughs> um, like your granomes and stuff like that. So you can do all sorts of cool stuff with these. Um, you know, as far as colors go as well, just by changing this color of ice dub in here. Um, but I would fish these. There's caddis in the river at any time. Um, they may not be hatching on the surface. They, they're still crawling around on the bottom, getting dislodged. The fish recognize them as food. Um, so again, with a soft tackle, a bright spot, and this general shape, it's something you can fish any time. It's uh, really a cool, cool pattern. I like it. And it's a soft tackle, so it's uh, it is what it is. But yeah, we do have West Coast rednecks, especially in the Northern California. Wait for my comments to catch up here. <laughs> Gibby, hello. <laughs> Thanks, Nate. <laughs> right on Jordan. Yeah, Luis, uh, Hairline sells the kit through uh, a number of uh, distributors, not directly though. Um, <laughs> yeah, Redding's like totally not normal California, just so everybody knows. It's, it's uh, definitely, uh, definitely a little bit more Wild West up here, which is fine by me, I dig it. Man, they got me switching thread like, what? Um, so we're going to go back to a brown thread. And what else am I tying? Oh, yeah. Oh, goodness. Bucktail. Um, Yeah, any town that has their own rodeo grounds, you can pretty much ensure that there is a redneck or two. With the big truck that's like super polished. <laughs> I, I would call myself more of a hippie redneck. I like hiking, Cheech. So... Absolutely, Scott. No problem, man. My pleasure. All right, we got to find our size 14. Um, so again, we're going back to our size 14 nymph wet hook, and this is going to be uh, TP's little nymph thing. And Terry actually, wait, Terry. <laughs> what am I getting that? Tracy actually works for Hairline, so this is one of his patterns. All right, so we'll do our connecting turns down the vise. And you can see, once you start getting comfortable, you'll be able to move faster on your basic wraps going down the vise here. So although your hooks may run out, hey, Joe, what's going on? Aaron, hip neck. There you go. What's up, Mr. Mathis? Oh, the magic word of the day. I'm not ready to let it go yet. I haven't figured it out. I Actually, I know exactly what it's going to be. It's going to be good. Man, I'll tell you one thing. They closed I-5, which is like, you know, the big highway here. And uh, this morning they reopened it. It was quite the sight. I've, I haven't seen traffic like that since I worked in LA as a paramedic or EMT. So we're going to take our uh, Hungarian partridge feather and you can see I've stripped some off and this is going to form our tail again. Um, Hungarian partridge is one of the best uh, tailing materials I would say in the world. Um, it's modeled like 
by the speckles that you see on it. If you can see the speckles. Um, and mayflies are speckly little critters. So most bugs seem to be speckly. Um, and next up we're going to put in some of our medium copper wire again. And you can see I don't bring it all the way back because I'm going to work behind this just a smidge to uh, operate. This one's kind of technical. We've got a lot of materials that go in this. So I'm going to take three strands of our peacock. I just like to even them up. It helps me work. Once I get this in, We'll do a refresh here, make sure I keep up on these comments. But she just handles them all for me anyway, so that's awesome. So you can see these guys are sticking out the back right now. <coughs> and... Uh-oh. I am not a rodeo clown. Little known fact though, my dad was a pro bull rider. He's not 6'1", so he made it into uh, pro bull riding. <laughs> uh, do I stay with the same type of thread most of the time? Um, for my personal tying, I do. Um, but I'm actually like an incredibly weird human. So, um, typically they do uh, you know, you can change quite a bit, uh, just depending on your patterns. But if I'm tying brown nymphs, you know, and I'll just stick with a brown or a black thread are probably the two of the most common. <laughs> only, you only make Mr. Evers call Mr. Firehole. If I had to choose one thread to use, what would it be? Um, it would probably be like an 8 aught black. So that would be my thread of choice. So something like something like that. You're not going to go wrong. It's not going to really mess you up. Um, without getting into GSPs and all sorts of fancy threads. So we're going to use some of our, our hair's mask. You can see we've been plucking away at this guy. And for the back of this fly, I want to come down here there's going to be different colors of hair all throughout this mask and we're going to look for this darker hair later right here you can see that under hair is nice and dark it's going to be for our thorax over here we got a much lighter under hair so I'm just going to take this pinch and I just kind of hold it in my hand and I'll start by stripping out all of the really long guard hairs and we'll go through just a little bit of a like a primping <sighs> for the word oh I imagine I heard Boise was called Brandon hello what did I just tie in this is uh, peacock hurl sorry if I forgot to state that um, so the word for tonight, because we are listening to some old crow medicine show, is banjo. So I'm going to form just a nice slender dubbing noodle because everybody can relate to a spaghetti noodle. About half to three quarters the diameter of a traditional spaghetti noodle though. And what I'm going to try to do is work this forward so that we have a progressively larger body 
if your dubbing comes apart, you can just keep working your thread through. It's fine. It's not going to hurt. <clears throat> so next little deal we're going to do here is we'll pull all of these peacock fibers forward, or peacock hurl. I think it should be like TP's mohawk nymph. Because it kind of has, looks like a mohawk up there. Looks pretty rad. Um, and again, we'll just do our wraps through with our medium copper wire, which will make the mohawk much less impressive. <laughs> and when we get up here, We'll go ahead and tie that in. A few solid wraps. And a helicopter. I'm trying not to teach you guys my bad habits, which are many. So I'm going to go ahead and take one turn with this pulled backwards to reorient it back, which is our peacock curl. And next up, we're going to dive into some of this. Uh, Man, I got an F5 more. I keep looking at it, and I'm like, oh, nobody's commenting. Throwing me off. Cheech probably making fun of me right now. Can't miss it. All right. Big B. <laughs> the green behind the wire. Yeah, that's good. Sorry, Jeremy. That's going to be our uh, peacock curl. Shuffling. <laughs> Yes, Chief. Band Joe is the proper spelling for banjo. <laughs> like I said, probably miss Cheech making fun of me. So I'm going to take some of this darker dubbing here, which is just a different section of our hair's mask. I actually like this. This is a cool color. And if you have trouble getting your dubbing to stick on there, there's dubbing waxes. We make a product called Swax. Super sticky. Um, it'll stick everything together. And you can see I just get a nice little area built there. And I'm just going to wrap back over itself just a bit here just to create some head space. I don't mind it. And we'll pull the peacock curl forward, creating the head of the fly. <laughs> so this is really like a cool, you're getting some extra flash without adding flash to like a really cool little hair's ear style pattern with a little bit more behind it. Um, and again, just a great all around, I wouldn't just tie this in a 14, I'd do it in like a 12 and a 10 and um, just stacks of colors. If you wanted to, you could, you know, chomp it up a bit and uh, use uh, use all sorts of different colors but uh, or you know put resin over the wing case that kind of stuff um, whatever you want to do sky's sky's the limit when you're tying flies you're the you're the puppeteer here so I will pick out some of these guard hairs that I've left in they're very short But you can see it's a, a really buggy, more of a, I'd almost think of this as a, you know, it could be a mayfly. They could eat it for anything. <laughs> no, no, John, I'm not, not from Missouri. <laughs> Dubbing waxes for dudes who can't spit. <laughs> there you go. There's Joe's thoughts on that. So that's our, our third 
rodeo tonight. For some reason, this hair, every time I use hair dubbing, I make the biggest mess with it. And uh, my puppy goes crazy. She absolutely loves... Uh, uh, loves rabbit. She caught me a really nice squirrel the other day. I was proud of her. Okay, so this is going to be kind of a little bit of a different, more classic pattern. This is a uh, streamer hook size 6. Actually, my, actually, John, my favorite launch here, oops, should be looking at this, not the comment section, on the lower Sacramento River, which is where I live, is uh, the rodeo grounds. That's pretty cool, actually. Except for they shut it down when the rodeo comes to town. Then you have to pull covert operations in your watermaster rafts. So I'll do connecting turns all the way down the shank of this long streamer hook. And they don't have to be perfect. Nobody's going to grade you on perfection of your turns on this underbody here. And this is a Mylar tinsel. It looks to be about a medium to me. They don't denote the uh, size of the tinsel on this specific spool. Um, this has a cool little rubber band on it. Yeah, you don't want to lose that. So what I do is I actually just pull it off with the rubber band attached. And so it's kind of interesting. You're going to have, if you can see, you have a gold side and a silver side. So you want to tie it in gold side. Or actually, I'm sorry. You want to tie it in gold side out. And now this is a great trick to get comfortable with. You want to have a smooth, smooth, smooth body here. And if you hear three-year-olds pleading with their mother in the background, I apologize. I do this from home after hours. And... Uh, we have a three-year-old who thinks he never needs to go to bed. Add some DNA. <laughs> exactly, right? Um, so this is just going to be a multi-stranded floss. This happens to be uh, a 900 denier, four strand, or no, 1200. Jiminy Christmas. That's, that's significant. You did hear Watermaster. Absolutely. That is like my, uh, my ninja craft. I like to heckle the local guides. I put on my, my super cool guy sun buff and uh, sneak down the river in that. So I'm going to tie in this, this floss, and you want to make sure that this is as smooth as possible. So now this technique here, specifically, is incredibly handy. And as you come forward, again, keep it as smooth as possible. If you want to take your time, take your time. I'll speed it up a bit, just for the sake of your bandwidth consumption. But the trick is, the smoother your underbody, the smoother your floss will lay down. And that's a foundation piece for pretty much a lot of flies. Like if you get into tying Atlantic salmon flies or copper johns and you have a bad thread base, it's going to be hard for you to put like that wire down. So I'm going to take my floss, and if you go to fly fishing shows, you'll see dudes tying the Atlantic salmon stuff and they're wearing white gloves and uh, Cheech can vouch for this for me <laughs> he was uh, cracking up 
So some of those guys are using, you know, really expensive silks that were probably from like the early 1900s. And if you have any roughness on your hands, I mean, it can fray your floss. This isn't like a polyester or a rayon floss, so it's rather resilient. <laughs> Got any tips with body quill? Um, yeah, I do. <laughs> we'll save that for the advanced class. So you can see again, I'm just making sure these flosses lay out nice and flat. And, uh... We're going to leave a little room to tie in our bucktail here. So I went a little overzealous. I didn't, I honestly haven't tied with this floss yet. So I was a little bit curious to see how it laid down. Although with like a 1200 denier or denier, uh, I had a feeling it was going to go down like a rock. It's going to be a, a big, big jump, jump of a uh, chunk, I mean, of uh floss. So next up we're going to take our wire and you can see you take your turns and just take your time and you're just going to space them out. And again like with our you know PT and any of our other this is technically ribbing that we've done on flies just take your time until you get super fast at it which can happen. And even if you leave a little extra like I did, don't worry. Set it down if you're tying more than one fly. Um, you can figure out an algorithm to where each fly is going to take you X amount of inches of wire. And you can actually cut and prep all of those. So, <laughs> ninja stuff, Cheech, ninja. So next up is we're going to start using some bucktail, which is a uh, just a classic, classic material. And so there's going to be this little darker section of the bucktail. I tend to stay out of that zone. Um, and I'm going to take off about... People always talk about deer hair. If I press this flat, it's about a quarter of an inch. And I'll show you guys that here in a second. So if I press this flat, it's about a quarter of an inch long. What I'm going to do is I'm going to find the hair that is the most equal. And I just start matching it. Which is called, I call it stacking, but it's really... It's just trying to even out as much of these hairs as possible. And you don't need a ton for this pattern. So we'll take one good wrap, make sure it's in the place you want it, and we'll do a few behind that. <laughs> so that's the first layer of our wing. Ninja. Love ninjas. I'd love to go on American Ninja Warrior. I'd probably fall like after the first jump, but that's fun. <laughs> so again, I'm just going to loosely pull these guys apart. Even them out, and if I see some longer ones, a little taper behind this body isn't a bad thing either. So we're going to set that wing on top of the previous wing. And I just move forward just a little bit. And last but not least, we'll do some more yellow. And up here, I don't mind a little extra taper. Um, 
So we'll lay this yellow right on top again. And I'm going to bring these all together now. You can see I trimmed out some of those bottoms. That's just to kind of smooth out. And these older patterns, like these old patterns like this, they don't have smooth little tiny heads. They're kind of big wonky uh, dills. I grew up fishing a similar pattern to this kind of... Uh, silver body white wing um, for Puget Sound cutthroat. So you can see you just get a nice little uh, and you could taper that off a little better. Um, again you can use head cement if you're rather impatient. You can stick eyes on here if you get some eyes like a two and a half mil and this is where like a rotation or rotary vise comes in pretty handy. And there you go. Just a real basic bucktail streamer. Bucktail does smell, just to forewarn you. Aaron! Hello, hello. If I wore a buff with no shirt, I would <laughs> win Ninja Warrior. Either that or blind all of the people in the world and they would see like some flabby arms. You nailed it, Evers. <laughs> buff is considered cheating. <laughs> so, post chat. Jordan wants to know what this is called. This uh, this is just called a bucktail streamer. Just a standard old bucktail streamer. Pretty. There's a whole series of patterns that are based off of this long shank style, like this um, gray ghosts stuff like that. So it's a uh, pretty cool thing. Thanks, John. Appreciate it. All right. So the next fly is uh, probably one of my favorite, favorite flies in the entire world. Um, we use it, the, originally it's called a girdle bug. Um, so it's a stone fly, large nymph, uh, imitating pattern. Hmm. What do I do with those eights? Oh goodness. I've lost things. Welcome to Loon Live. Oh, there they go. They fell on the ground. Um, so this pattern I will fish anywhere from a size 6 or an 8, 4. I mean, you name it, and I am not scared or nervous of this pattern. Um, I honestly, in my box, probably have about 30 or so of them on me at any time. And uh, it just represents a big meal. Um, so I have some buddies here that are from you know fly shops and stuff like that and uh, one of the guys might show up here on a live stream in the future. Maybe our next one after the 101 class. And uh, I'm going to use a, a 6 op brown thread here guys. Um, with that size 8 nymph hook and we lovingly call this thing the stupid fly and um, not because it's a simple fly to tie per se but fish just are stupid for this big rubber leg or girdle bug so if you fish new water and you're in America or anywhere try it they seem to love it 
Let's see. Uh oh. Scott, you'd be surprised, man. Um, I can't tell you um, how many fish, like Cheech said, I mean, I'm throwing stuff that's six, seven inches long and, you know, an eight inch fish eats it. Take care, Joe. <laughs> the fire hole is calling. Um, smells like victory. <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, you can't really go wrong. I mean, don't be scared to throw big stuff. The problem is, nobody, or the good thing is, is not a lot of people do. So sometimes that fish won't see that kind of a, uh, you know, pattern. So it could be really beneficial for you. Okay, so we tie in, and this is a medium round rubber leg. Comes in a sheet. And what I do is... I will separate off a few pieces, so you see, and then you can separate it even further. It's just barely attached. Luis asks who won. Uh, Orion Dalton, Luis. The bucktail is for trout. You could use it for salmon. Heck, I'd swing that for steel steelhead. I would. I think they'd eat it personally. Um, do I crimp the barbs? Yes. If you get a nice pair of heavy duty pliers at your bench, you can easily pop in there, crimp the barb. Oddly enough, I think there's a lot of waterways that don't require you to to this day, which surprises me. So I'm going to take about two inches of this round rubber and I like to put it in half. The reason I try to make sure it's in half when I put it on is because it's one less cut that I have to make. And my trick is, is I will pull tension on it as I wrap it down one side. I'll rotate this guy over to the opposite side. I like to think of things as like a clock. So if we're looking down the front of this fly, coming this way, we're at three and nine, and you're going to get a nice split tail. So next up um, is our chenille. This is a variegated chenille, which means it's two-tone, and this one is black and coffee. So they'll have these with, you know, green and olive, golden brown, purple and pink, it all works. One of my uh, one of my best versions of this that I like to fish, see, rabbit fuzz everywhere, is a full purple one. Fish eat it. There is no such thing as a purple salmon fly nymph or stone fly nymph in the world that I've ever seen. Take care, Cheech. <laughs> String licorice, yep, exactly. Um, so you can tie all the legs in and everything like that. I don't bother uh, working back and forth down the hook shank that much in the initial stages of this fly. Um, I know my legs are going to end up right about here. You can do just four legs, you can do six legs. Um, really, this, it's it's your choice on how tricky you want to get. Um, so kind of like when we did the woolly worm, I like to wrap and push this back. Um, if you want to add weight to this, you can use a lead wire, a non-lead wire, the choice is yours. Um, So, I'm going to vary from the book here just a hair because I'm naughty. But I'm going to add, I like having 
six legs. Just personal preference. <coughs> so for the back legs, again, I do my little and half trick and I'll tie down one side with a few and peg it out at uh, nine and three, if you remember from what I was saying. And at this point, I'll go ahead and put in the rest of our legs and our antennas. So I'll just take this in half and I'll wrap it in for one side. So we're not moving back and forth a bunch on the um, fly. And these I'm not measuring out to be totally perfect. I'm just putting them in half. Um, I'll show you why. So you can see I'll separate this out here. Oop, cut that a little bit. And then I'll wrap up towards the front. needs more purple exactly got flies to fill in yeah I want to see all those new bugs Cheech I'd like some of those for uh, my box thanks so next up we'll do the same thing we did with the tail just in the front here and you can see all these legs kind of get willy-nilly uh, kind of all over the joint don't need to don't need to stress out. So the reason I don't tie all my legs in when I'm doing the back half, I just do it when I get to the front, is because you now have to work through these, which is okay. It's not horrible. So now this is going to be the tricky part. You're going to pull the front set of legs out and Go ahead and wrap down there. Don't cut your thread. Um, and then I'll just do a few wraps up here around the bottom of the, the head. We'll get ready to primp this guy out. So I'll be impatient on this one and I'll just put a dot of resin in there. Oops, knock everything over, make a mess. Standard operating procedure for me. Um, so now we have our antenna out here and say we want to, so what I'll do is I'll hold those together like that and you can just cut up needs more purple did my comments stop all the way that'd be frustrating um, and now for our legs typically what I'll do so I like a lot of leg so I kind of bring them up just like a haircut <coughs> and a lot of times I'll shorten up the tails just because Naturals don't have a really long tail. So you can see you get legs going every which way and you can kind of adjust them. They're not going anywhere. Everything just goes, kicks around while uh, it's in the water there. Alrighty. So that is the girdle bug needs more purple all right i guess i'm caught up on my comments so i think that marks our fifth fly for the evening <coughs> next week let me uh zoom out here oh, i'll scoot back so you guys can see me and i don't look that freakish 
Um, next week we're going to be finishing out. Looks like we're going to do a parachute uh, type fly, a comparadon, uh, an atoms. Should be fun. And what else? Alcare caddis. So yeah. So five dries next week, which are going to be... Yeah, yeah, Lewis, you can actually, I mean, you can, I know guys that could, you know, probably fish that for panfish and bass, absolutely. Uh, Jeremy, no, that is actually a big nymph. So, um, when the salmon flies look like this, they are juveniles and um, are living under the water. They actually take uh, three years to become mature and hatch. So it's a it's a pretty massive bug. Um, and and that size, I mean, in comparison, like you can see it against my hand, it's a size six. That's a small one. That's not even a big salmon fly. Um, you can see in the comparison here, all fish salmon fly patterns. You can see the difference in the, the hook length. I will fish them a full two and a half inches long um, without any sort of an issue. And uh, you can add weight to it and all that stuff as needed as well. But uh, yeah, so next week we're going to be doing um, a ton of dry flies, which is really fun. Um, kind of some of the hotter dry fly. <laughs> uh, thanks, Carl. Thanks, John. Uh, some of the better dry fly patterns to more banjo. <laughs> Jordan, you're nice. You're helping people out. I like it. Uh, I'll send extra good karma your way for uh, for the drawing. <laughs> so, yeah, next, uh, be sure to log on to the Loon website. Go register the email. Sign up. Put in the word banjo. And register to win a huge kit of uh, cool Loon stuff. Um, as always, guys, I appreciate you tuning in and watching. Hopefully you've learned some fun stuff and uh, to go work on. And uh, we'll see you next week. Make sure no last-minute comments come in. It takes forever to refresh. The comments take longer than the video. Lonnie, thanks. Jeremy, thanks. We'll check you guys all out next week. Have a great night. Stay dry. And... Uh, have fun. Hopefully go fishing. Take care, guys.